Good evening. Welcome to worship this Maundy Thursday at Martin Luther Church. We begin our worship with hymn 417, The Congregation May Remain Seated for the Entire Hymn. In this Lenten season, we have heard again how our Lord walked the path of suffering which led him to the cross for our salvation. We have also heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and one another. This is the struggle we were committed to at baptism. Now, God's forgiveness and the power of his spirit to amend our lives continue with us because of his love for us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Within the community of the church, our God never tires of giving peace and new life. In the absolution, we receive forgiveness of sins as from God himself. This absolution we should not doubt but firmly believe that our sins are thus forgiven before God in heaven. For this comes to us in the name of and by the command of our Lord. Now we who receive God's love in Christ are called to love one another and to become servants to one another as Jesus became our servant. In Holy Communion, The members of Christ's body participate most intimately in this love. Remembering our Lord's Last Supper with his disciples, 
we eat the bread and we drink the cup of this sacred meal. Together, we receive the gift of the Lord's body and blood for forgiveness, and we participate in the new covenant, which makes us one with him and one with each other. This Lord's Supper is a promise. It's a promise of the great banquet we will all share in with all the saints when our Lord returns. A promise of that joyful culmination of our reconciliation with God and one another. Please stand. Let us confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. Almighty God, merciful Father, I confess to you that I have not loved you with all my heart. In what I have done and left undone, I have pursued my ways instead of your ways. I have not loved my brothers and sisters as myself. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. I am truly sorry for my sins. I repent of them. I beg for your mercy, O Lord. Forgive us for the sake of Jesus Christ, who suffered and died for us. The Almighty God has been merciful to us and has sent His Son to die for all. For His sake, God forgives our sins and calls us from darkness to His marvelous light. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ has forgiven us and reconciled us to God and has promised us the power to forgive and love each other. Relying on his promise, therefore, be reconciled with one another. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of Holy Communion, you give us your true body and blood as a remembrance of your suffering and death on the cross. Grant us so firmly to believe your words and promise that we may always partake of this sacrament to our eternal good. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. As many of you know, the Lord's Supper was instituted as Jesus and his disciples were celebrating the Passover. These words from Exodus chapter 12 tell us about that first Passover. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the doorframe. None of you shall go out of the door of your house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the doorframe and will pass over that doorway. And he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you as he promised, observe this ceremony. And when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you, then tell them, 
It is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then the people bowed down and worshipped. The Israelites did just what the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on the throne to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon, and the firstborn of all the livestock as well. Pharaoh and all his officials and all the Egyptians got up during the night, and there was loud wailing in Egypt, for there was not a house without someone dead. This is the word of our God. Our service continues with Psalm 116c, sung by the choir. You may follow along in your bulletins on page 14.
Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16 through 17. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all share the one loaf, the word of our God. As often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please stand. Our gospel is from Mark chapter 14 and will serve as the basis for our sermon this evening. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house, he enters. The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go, just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them, Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At Christmas, there are traditions. There is a way that things are supposed to go, and then when it's over, everyone is very happy. Same with Passover. There are traditions. After you do this, then you do this, and it, it's supposed to be all very happy and nice. But the night that Jesus celebrated the Passover with his disciples, it was not the usual thing. Jesus shocked his disciples. He filled them with grief. Jesus put something in front of his disciples that was totally new. They had never seen before, and he said, take. Now, the Passover was a meal that was to commemorate what we read in our first reading when when the Lord struck down the firstborn of Egypt and then the people of Israel were finally able to leave Egypt. It was their exodus. And this is kind of how the Passover was probably supposed to go. Um, we, we don't exactly know, but it was something like this. First, the head of the household would speak a blessing over the first cup. And then they would share the, the first dish, which was some herbs and a uh, a sauce of fruit. Next, they would set out the second course and the second cup, and the head of the house would explain to everyone the meaning of the Passover. Then, after singing some psalms, they would eat the main course and drink the second cup. He would speak a blessing over the bread, and then they would eat the lamb and the bread and some bitter herbs. Finally, they would speak a blessing over the third cup, and after singing some psalms, say some praise over a fourth cup, and then finally, that, that was it, they were done. But that's not how it went at all when Jesus did it that night with his disciples. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. That, that was definitely part of the normal, traditional Passover meal. So that was, that was on track. But before that happened, there were some things that were very unexpected. Things were not as nice as the disciples would have expected. Jesus had some very hard things to say to them. Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. And one by one, each of them says, surely you don't mean me, but it is one of them. It is one of the twelve. One who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. But then he takes the bread, and he breaks it and gives thanks. And, and now it's kind of going how, how they would expect it. This was probably the part of the Passover where it was the main meal. They speak the blessing over the bread, and then they eat the bread with the lamb and then the bitter herbs. But then all of a sudden, Jesus makes a sharp break from tradition. Suddenly, he is going way off script. He, he breaks the bread and he gives it to them and he says, Take, this is my body. The bread was supposed to be a reminder of the bread that the Israelites had the night they left Egypt. That's, that's what it was supposed to be, and what Jesus says is not that. This is my body. But then he takes the cup, and he gives thanks, and, and he gives it to them, and, and now we're back on track, because that, that was part of the Passover tradition, except he's, he's still getting a little bit off, off here. It, it's not quite the same. They would have all had their own individual cups that they could drink from. And now Jesus is passing around his cup to them. And he's saying, take this. This is my blood. My blood of the covenant, which is poured out for you. And they drank. And then they sang a hymn. And they went out to the Mount of Olives. And that was something. What a Passover meal that had been. It left the disciples feeling shocked. 
They were feeling grief. They were surprised. And I think we can understand why. Because if you had been one of the 12 disciples, there's no way you could have known it. There's absolutely no way that you would have known that one of the 12 disciples was capable of doing what Jesus said. He had said, one of you will betray me. And these disciples had done everything together. They had left everything and followed him everywhere. They loved him. He loved them. None of Jesus' family was at this Passover celebration, as you would have expected. It was just them, just the twelve. This was a tight circle. And one of them, who is eating with him, is going to sell him? Can't be me. They all say, but it is one of them. You just don't think of people as being evil, do you? People are nice. People are funny. People are beautiful and inspiring. You would never know, just looking at people, that they are capable of selling the Son of Man, of betraying Jesus, until they do it. We humans are not so bad, we think, until people do things that shock us and we see what they are capable of. We shock ourselves. We are nice. We're lovely people when we are fed, when we got all of our sleep, and when there are no threats and we've got all of our needs met. We're, we're beautiful people to each other. But take that away. What about when we're hungry? What about when we're sleep deprived? What about when there is a threat and we have needs that must be met? Then we get mean. Family relationships and friendships aside, I must say this thing and I must get that thing. And then when we're done and the episode is over, the dust clears and we see shocked faces. You had eaten bread with them. And now you hurt them. You tore up close relationships. And you, you, you had been, you are one of Jesus' disciples. So, Jesus has to do this. He sits down with 12 human beings just like us, and he has to make some necessary changes to this Passover celebration. This will no longer be the, all about Israel's exodus from Egypt. Now, this has to be about a different exodus. The Son of Man will go, Jesus said, just as it has been written. A new, strange, and awful story is being written now. It matches the strange and awful ways of, of sinful humankind. Now, the Son of Man must bow his head very soon to the will and to the wishes of evil men. And they, with splendid ease, will carry out the most horrid plans they can devise. But they are pawns. Little do they know that at the same time, there is a different plan. God has set another plan over their twisted little plans. His righteous and loving plan is being carried out at the same time. It is set in motion by a traitor. God's plan is carried through this crowd that is deluded with hatred. And it is sped on with murderous haste to a torture device we call a cross. And it is exactly what God has designed. It is the way he wants it to go. The Son of Man must go as it has been written. What can you do? What can any of us do except take our sorry, sinful selves and sit down on the sideline and watch? Listen. Humbly watch as everything unfolds tonight, tomorrow, and Easter Sunday. What is happening is taking place for you. 
It is a gift of life and salvation. Take it. And then, of course, there was that other thing that Jesus made very different about the Passover celebration. You probably caught it. You you had to catch it. Jesus took the, the ritual, traditional bread and wine, and he gave it a very different purpose. He took the bread and broke it, and he said about the bread, this is my body. And then he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he said about the cup of wine, this is my blood. And what do you suppose he meant by that? Well, think about it. Who is it who is saying this? Who's talking here? Who is saying this is my body? This is the one who is the Son of Man and also the Son of God. This is the Word that has become flesh. He is the one who spoke the universe into existence and also received a spear right through the ribs. This is a man who is God, who is saying this. And he gives us not one, not a single, solitary reason to believe that the bread is not his body, that the wine is not his blood. So we know that's what it must be. That's what this means. The bread is actually his true body. The wine is truly, actually his blood, just as the Almighty One has said. Now, in a short while, you are about to be right there. The bread and the cup are going to pass in front of you, and you will find yourself face to face with a miracle. You, defiled by hatred, face to face with love. You, dirty, face to face with the power to cleanse. You, who have disobeyed and become unholy, are going to be right there in front of the Holy One who obeyed and went and died for the forgiveness of your sins. This is not a meal for someone who plans to keep on carrying out their sins, but for those who reject their sin and desire forgiveness, you know what Jesus says to you. Take. At the end of this service, when communion is over, we're, we're going to finish with one last, one last rite. The altar will actually be stripped bare while a cantor is, is chanting Psalm 88. This will be symbolic of how Jesus was abandoned, of how all 12, not just Judas, but all 12 of his closest friends left him. As you look at that and you listen, you may count yourselves among the disciples who failed Jesus. You may remind yourself of how he fed you tonight, how you received his body and his blood for the forgiveness of all your sins. You took it, and so that's what you get. And then, prepare yourself for the next part of this service, which will take place tomorrow on Good Friday, where we will humbly listen as God's gift of salvation is given at the cross. We may take that too. Amen. Our service continues with the offering.
Our service continues on page 16 of your worship bulletins. O God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, O God the Son, redeemer of the world, O God the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, three persons in one God. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forebears. Spare us, good Lord. Spare your people, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Spare us, good Lord. From all spiritual blindness, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all lack of charity, from all deadly sin, and from the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. From all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart, and contempt for your word and your will. From earthquake and tempest, from drought, fire, and flood, from civil strife and violence, from war and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, and by your proclamation of the kingdom, by your bloody sweat and bitter grief, by your cross and suffering, and by your precious death and burial, by your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit. In our times of trouble, in our times of prosperity, in the hour of death and on the day of judgment, receive our prayers, O Lord our God. Govern and direct your holy church. Fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is according to your will. Enlighten all ministers with true knowledge and understanding of your word, that by their preaching and living they may declare it clearly and show its truth. Encourage and prosper your servants who spread the gospel in all the world and send out laborers into the harvest. Bless and keep your people that all may find and follow their true vocation and ministry. Give us hearts to love and reverence you that we may diligently live according to your commandments. To all your people, give grace to hear and receive your word and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Strengthen those who stand firm in the faith. Encourage the faint-hearted. Raise up those who fall. And finally, give us the victory. Rule the hearts of your servants the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice, love mercy, and walk in the ways of truth. Bless and defend all who strive for our safety and protection, and shield them in all dangers and adversities. Grant wisdom and insight to those who govern us and to judges and magistrates, the grace to execute justice with mercy. To all nations, grant unity, peace, and concord. And to all people, give clothing, food, and shelter. 
Grant us abundant harvests, strength and skill to conserve the resources of the earth, and wisdom to use them well. Enlighten with your spirits all who teach and all who learn. Come to the help of all who are in danger, necessity, and trouble. Protect all who travel by land, air, or water. And show your pity on all prisoners and captives. Strengthen and preserve all women who are in childbirth and all young children. And comfort the aged, the bereaved, and the lonely. Defend and provide for the widowed and the orphaned the refugees and the homeless, the unemployed, and all who are desolate and oppressed. Heal those who are sick in body or mind, and give skill and compassion to all who care for them. Grant us true repentance. Forgive our sins, and strengthen us by your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your Holy Word. Son of God, we ask you to hear us. Son of God, we ask you to hear us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be with them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the ages to come, life everlasting. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who brought the gift of salvation to all people by his death on the tree of the cross, so that the devil, who overcame us by a tree, would in turn by a tree be overcome. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song,
our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We now invite all who are members of this church or a sister church to come forward to receive the sacrament.
Please stand. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, O God the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in the sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night I cry out to you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I am overwhelmed with troubles, and my life draws near to death. I am counted among those who go down to the pits. I am one without strength. I am set apart with the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, who are cut off from your care. 
You have put me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily on me. You have overwhelmed me with all your waves. You have taken me from my closest friends and have made me repulsive to them. I am confined and cannot escape. My eyes are dim with grief. I call to you, Lord, every day. I spread out my hands to you.